Among the various kinds of rice available in China, there is a particular type called seawater rice that's becoming increasingly popular. It doesn't taste as salty as its name implies, but just like ordinary rice. Flavor is nothing compared with the hope the new strain offers of turning the country's 20 million hectares of saline soil into fine, arable land. So what is seawater rice? What's its magic? Let's start by understanding saline soil. Saline soil refers to land containing so much salt that hardly any crops can grow in it. Globally, there are 950 million hectares of saline land, 100 million hectares of it in China, which is not much less than the 128 million hectares of arable land in the country. Of the 100 million hectares, about 6.67 million hectares are located in coastal regions around Bohai Bay and southeastern coast, where land used to be sea bottom. About 10 million hectares are in the northeastern provinces, where the winter permafrost is more than a meter deep. When it is in spring, the water on the surface evaporates, but the salt it contained remains in the soil, and so the salt accumulates. About 66.67 million hectares are located in northwestern regions where there is so little rainfall that the salt on the Earth's surface can hardly be washed away. The saline areas in inland are the biggest problem because no grass, crops, or trees can grow there. They are of almost no use. In the 1960s, there was a famous party secretary in Langkau County, Hunan Province, called Zhao Yu Lu who died at the age of 42 fighting saline soil. Saline land accounted for 36% of land in the county, bringing with it much poverty and misery for the people. Seawater rice is exceptional in that it can grow on saline land, which contains 0.6% of salt. Most crops die if there is more than 0.2% of salt in the water. That apart, Seawater rice helps improve the saline land. Its roots can pull in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that most plants need, thus making the saline soil more fertile. These roots also make the saline soil porous, while the microbes that grow in them can improve the bacteria groups there. It was in the 1980s that China started its seawater rice research, about half a century later than some other countries. However, Chinese researchers caught up with and even overtook the West after decades of research thanks to Professor Yuan Longping and his team. Yuan set up a team to research seawater rice in 2012. By 2016, they founded the Qingdao Seawater Rice Research and Development Center. Yuan set three goals for them. The seawater rice must be able to withstand water that contains 0.6% of salt or more so as to save water resources. The yield must reach 300 kilograms per mu, so as to be sustainable for the economy. The total size of the plantation area must exceed 100 million mu, so that the scale is large enough. Soon enough, the first two goals were met. In 2017, the Qingdao Center developed YC0045, seeds that yielded 620 kilograms of rice per mu in water containing 0.6% salt. Over the past four years, the center has planted seawater rice in 1 million mu all over the nation, from Sanya in Hainan province in the south of the country, to Heilongjiang province in the north, and to Kashgar in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region in the west, yielding a record high 698.4 kilograms per mu in 2022. Today, from Sierra Leone to Pakistan and the United Arab Emirates to Indonesia, China is cooperating in seawater rice projects. Some say seawater rice might not be that profitable. So why still conduct research and development? It is necessary to see the whole picture. Seawater rice is important not only for producing hundreds of kilograms of food, but also for turning land previously unfit for cultivation into arable land. In this way, the amount of arable land can be increased without diminishing the nation's forest or grasslands. Yuan Longping once said, of the 1.5 billion mu of saline land in China, 
seawater rice can be grown in 200 million mu. If every mu can produce 300 kilograms of rice, 100 million mu will mean 3 billion more kilograms of rice, enough to support another 80 million people. It was also highlighted in the report delivered at the 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China that we will ensure that China's food supply remains firm in its own hands. There will soon be a day when rice grows even in the drought-hit northwestern regions of the country, and Heilongjiang farmers could see harvest from the once-wasted frozen fields. The scent of seawater rice will cover the saline soil, while the farmers there can enjoy white, sweet rice from their own fields. With hundreds of millions of mu saline soil turned into arable lands in the future, the people will remember the efforts today that made the miracle possible.